Alrighty guys, so today I will be showing you how to make a Lego sieve using um, something like a shoe box, just a cardboard box, and a cookie rack, cooling tray, a baking cooling rack, whatever you want to call it, something like this, or like this, um, that's stuck on there. More bricks to pull apart. Anyways, anyways, I'm getting distracted. So yeah, I'm showing you how to make one of these using a cardboard box and a rack. Um, and you will need something to cut the box with. Scissors probably aren't the best thing. I won't be using them. I'll probably find a knife somewhere. But yeah, that's what you'll need. Um, maybe a measuring tapes. Um, a pen or something just to rule a, lot, a straight line to follow when you cut but I'll show you step by step how we go about it or how I go about it um, what is this part? I'm getting distracted again I don't it looks like wild vine from Ben 10 that's what it looks like is it even Lego? I don't know. If you know, could you please tell me what it is? Because I'm so I'm really confused. Anyways, so yeah, here's the sieve. So basically, with the sieve, what you do is you get a some parts, tip it in like I have, push it around like that, except more, and then you get a lot of smaller parts fall through. Or well, that's the idea. And, and the idea is just to separate out um, things like this, those bits, um, you know, your larger pieces from these smaller pieces here. There's some, there's some more, just, just grabbing random bits. Yeah, and then hopefully this smaller one will separate out all the one by ones so I know it works on studs um, these tiles not so much they kinda have to fall on the right angle and then these clippy pieces again they don't work too well but hopefully it'll be less work for me um, in terms of separating out individual parts and while I'm here this bit of plastic is glued on with glue, really tough glue, so I will um, get this tray prepped, get the box prepped, and then I'll come back and show you what I did, how I did it, and everything, so I'll be back shortly. Okay, so as you can see, I have clean pulled off the paper off the tray and if you can see I've marked yeah there you go you can sit clearly see just above my finger there a little cut in the box I've done that three times on both sides about four centimeters up um, based off that one and, he, and like I said both sides there there and there and that's just so when I'm cutting it I know where the thing is <coughs> I've got a nice straight line so hopefully that all works the only thing is these feet are going to be a pain so once I figure it out I'll let you know alright guys so I'm back as you can see I've put the rack thing through the box um, I kind of got a bit of a head of myself but anyways so as you can see what I did is I cut a line through it where the rack is um, I measured up roughly how high I wanted it um, at like three points one on the left side one in the middle and one on the right um, and then I got a rule and marked a straight line across I think this is the dodgy side but anyways I did that and then I um, poked it through got the measurements for the um, feet so I can see where the feet 
were cut them out as well. I actually went from this side first. If I can manage to hold a camera and move the box. So I did that side first. Um, as you see the holes are a bit neater. So I could actually see what I was doing. Um, and then this bit is part of the bottom. But having it in there, um, it fills up with Lego when you're dropping Lego through. So I've bent it back that way. So when it sits in that box there, that faces, that's wedged between the two boxes, wedged between that and the inside of that box. Um, hopefully you can make sense of that. And yeah. I haven't had any issues with the Lego getting stuck in there anywhere or anything like that. Yeah, I cut through, I poked the rack through, um, cut out, hang on, hang on, I'm doing a terrible job of this. Um, cut out these holes and then I cut out the bottom um, and I left these flaps because we wanted to leave a bit of extra room along the edge there because of this being so weak well when I can show it to you properly because this is all flappy so we wanted to leave a bit leave some more room there in case it didn't work we had to leave a shot like that but anyways we got it working um, it works and we just I just bend that back like that um, these feet are annoying because they poke down like that the other one's better but it's all about finding the uh, rack and a box that fit together. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I would have liked a slightly bigger box or a slightly smaller rack, but that's what we had, so that's what we used. Um, and so I'll show you how it goes in. So I won't worry about that end, I'll show you this end. So when we gotta line it up um, and make sure this bit here it's folded back up like that and it goes in like so we're not worrying about that end and you tip your Lego so it goes, you put your Lego up there like that it's going to get a little bit noisy wiggle and jiggle it around and then all the little bits that fit through will drop through hopefully um, as you can see yeah, we've got two, and I can line them up, up properly, two one by 3s there, so they should fit through like that, yes. But, unless they end up going through like that, they won't get through, oh, they'll go through that way as well, so they'll go through that way. But if they're sitting flat like that, they'll never get through. Same with this piece, that'll never get through like that. But I don't really want these these bigger ones getting through because they go someplace else. But if they fall, manage to get through, it's no big deal. Um, so if we take that out, I'll show you. So we'll take that bit out um, and that one, and then that's pretty much what got through. Get the camera cord cable thing out of the way. So these are the sort of bits that I managed that fell through. Um, lots of little ones, which is what I want. And then in here we have the stuff that didn't get through. So bigger pieces, which is good. Um, because as you'll see in my um, collection video or sorting videos, I sort my pieces out by size, color, type, all sorts of different things. Um, if I can filter out the really big ones, so this is the really big stuff. Um, so like the stairs, they go somewhere. That'll go somewhere. Uh, these big tires, you know, big stuff for people, etc. You know, if you've ever sorted Lego like this, you'll know know what I'm talking about. It's just a process that you have to go through. Um, and then. It, no, that's the other one. Um, so yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's stuff. Again, more stuff that didn't go through. And where I was just showing you how it works. Um, yeah, that's what we've done. So you'll see this more when I 
ship go through this tub and sort it all out. Um, I found some really good stuff. There was a Yoda head in there, um, bionicle parts, there was capes, castle, walls, lots of different bits and pieces, but that's a thing for another day. Um, so yeah, we even found a spider. It's a nice spider. I think it's real Lego. I don't know. Did Lego put the Lego thing on the spiders or no? They should have. I might be blind and can't see it. Anyways. So there you go. That's the um, Lego sieve that I, I've been meaning to make for a while and have finally made it. Um, let me know what you thought. Let me know how you sort out your Lego and the various other bits and pieces. Um, there's even some handcuffs here. Um, do all the usual stuff and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.